I think I finally cleared that hurdle as a student of all of that frustration and anger and being so hard on myself. And now I'm just a little more relaxed and I'm actually having moments of fun, which feels really good. I'm ready to go out dancing and really enjoy tango. And so I figured the best way to do that is to move to a tango house. This is so cool. I didn't even know these existed, but they're all over the city. And basically dancers from all over the world come and stay at these tango houses. They rent a room with other dancers. They all make meals together, get dressed together, go out to milongas together, come back, talk about the milonga together. I feel like for me, it's going to be really important to have that community. People who have been going out dancing for years, who are true milongueras, and they can show me all the ropes. Yes? Can you hey. help me? You're not ready? No! <laughs> I need help, I don't know what to wear. Boutique, <laughs> Casa del Sol! Yay! Yay! So the designer of this gorgeous tango wear is Roxana Vincelli. She's the best, she's amazing, she's a genius. I like this more than I thought I would, and it definitely makes me feel like more longera. Tanguera. Yeah. Yes. You look fab. Yeah. So I'm all dressed up, ready to go out to the milonga, but there's one more thing I have to pay attention to. The rules. Milongas have rules. There's a whole code of conduct called the Codico. The first is that when you dance tango, you're dancing in tandas, and that's a set of four songs. They're short, but you're together for that whole journey. When the four songs end, there's a cortina, and that is basically a very different type of music that's played that clears the dance floor. So everybody knows that tanda is over, you go back to your seats, you chat with your friends, and then you get ready to dance the next tanda. But probably the hardest one, especially for beginners, is the cabaseo. And that's how the leader asks the follower to dance. So, I'm out of Milonga. I've been here two hours. Not one person has asked me to dance. It's really demoralizing. <laughs> I was like excited to come because I was like, oh, this is the place I've been going to every week and uh, I know people and it's really, it feels good now to like see people and say hi and you know, have people recognize you a little bit. It just feels really shitty to just be standing there and feel so awkward and like so alone. All my friends here are really advanced dancers, so they're asked to dance all, like every tanda, so um, of course it's wonderful to hang out with them, but it's still, I'm still alone, you know, so it's hard. <laughs> it's really hard. So the cabaseo is basically an exchange of glances across the dance floor. You're kind of looking around, making eye contact with someone you want to dance with, giving them a little smile to say you're interested. They give you a little nod or a, do you want to dance <laughs> kind of look. You say yes with a kind of look or expression, and then you meet on the dance floor. It's actually kind of magical to watch at a milonga because basically all of a sudden people are just coming together on the dance floor and you don't even see anything first. You don't even know how they did it, but it was the cabaseo. I did get better, I did get to dance a few times. I think it was because um, a friend of mine introduced me to someone and then two other guys asked me to dance after him and they all had different styles but I did okay following them. I had fun, hopefully they did. It kind of redeems the night for me. Um, I know it's part of the process but it's still a bummer when you're just sitting there for two, two and a half hours and um, not dancing at all. So it definitely got better. Yeah, it was fun, and now there's more to come. If I can survive it, I'm so tired. I think that's a big theme here in Buenos Aires is like, 
you push yourself pretty hard with these milongas and going out dancing and they start late, they end late. There's like a dozen to choose from every night. I'm trying to just power through because I don't have a ton of time left and this is my chance to dance in Buenos Aires. Like this is where it, it all kind of comes down to the milongas. Like that's the experience of tango in Buenos Aires. It's not taking classes, it's going out to dance. Now the plan for tonight is a whole bunch of people are coming back to Casa del Sol. We're all gonna cook up some food, hang out together, probably get to dance together in the salon. And then I'm sure there is another milonga to head to that starts at one in the morning and goes till six. So I'm gonna see how far I can push it tonight, but if not tonight, the next night and the next night. Recovering from all of these milongas, so much dancing, so many late nights. Hi. Hey. <laughs> We're dead after a night of dancing. What did we do? We had a party. And I have to say the experience has been really interesting. There have been so many moments where I've felt so intimidated and scared and nervous and upset. But then it's also been really uplifting and really inspiring. And just to get the chance to dance tango on the dance floors of Buenos Aires and to have those moments, to find those little moments of that sweet connection with my partner has been nothing short of magical. And definitely moving to the tango house was probably the best decision I ever made. Coming to Buenos Aires alone, learning tango for the first time, being in Casa del Sol just made the whole experience bigger and brighter and I felt like I really had a home and a family. So I'm going to keep dancing and searching for that, that connection, that moment of connection with my partners. But I think I have one more challenge left in me before I leave. I've decided I am going to take on the challenge of performing. 